Hey, what up fam, it's Joe Mill here back with Killer Miller Q and today we're putting together the ultimate brisket burger. I got some Snake River Farms brisket that we're gonna be adding together with a couple other components, firing up the old Blackstone, and we're gonna slap together something real nice. Let's go. Started. First things first, we're gonna slide in here on the star to show. I've been holding out on this right here. This right here is some Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket. We're gonna be making this beautiful brisket burger out of this today, along with something that I actually got. Big shout out to my guy that hooked me up with this here for Father's Day. Nice looking out. The boar's head hickory smoked beef bacon. Never had beef bacon before, but check that out. Man, that looks beautiful. How bad could it be? The hardest part is make sure I cut this up nice and thin. I got a feeling this is gonna set our burger off. And then just some good old fashioned bacon, man. I love this bacon right here. That's some good bacon. Let me get up out of this sun. It's about a buck 18 today. All right, back inside. As you can see, I'm getting my uh, tools of destruction for today. My KitchenAid mixer and uh, grinder. It's been in the freezer, so you can see it's got that nice frost on there. Uh, I'm gonna be going with the uh, medium die. Um, I'll probably take this apart just so y'all can get a peek at it. Some people be asking questions. I know it's a little loud in your ear, but they be asking questions about how does this thing work and um, if it's worth it. And for me, and I mean, just being able to hook it directly up to my old mixer here, the good old fashioned KitchenAid, it does a good job. I mean, it pretty much this tab right here comes off once you unscrew it. This plugs in, and um, you know, I have done sausage. We're about to knock out this quick burger grind, which isn't too much meat, but uh, it does a pretty good job. You got your choice right there, you got your blade, and then of course, you got the mechanism that's going ahead and is bringing everything forward. Um, I think they be having these in plastic. I wouldn't get the plastic. Go with the metal. I think I heard some people with some bad reviews on that. But uh, let me go ahead and uh, get this affixed. And I'm going to bring out the uh, meat and we're going to get this thing started. There we go. Now the reason we uh, put this thing in the freezer is so it'll be nice and cold. As we start getting this thing grinding, you're going to create some friction. So you're going to actually be creating a lot of heat in here. And that way you don't get your meat getting too stuck and emulsified. So try to keep everything as cold as you can. Basically, I'm going to let everything kind of cascade directly out and right onto this pan. We're going to be doing a double grind today. So this is how we're going to hook up this burger. So like I said, I got this Snake River Farms brisket here. And this is just some of the trimming, some of the pieces that came out. Look at that marbling in there. This brisket was great. We're going to go ahead and it's about to get loud in here. But uh, we're about to get this thing going. Keep it respectful. And we're just going to be feeding these chunks directly down this hole. This might be a little big one. I'm going to find something smaller to kind of get it going. Break up all of this good meat. And this will be perfect, nice and long. Oh yeah, we're going to have a whole lot of that. We're going to end up with some of that. We're going through it two times. Let's get some more scraps in there. I got my little plunger. I'll grab that in a second. But it'll sell feed for what it's worth. I ain't got to give it too much work. Make sure I don't get too, too much fat in here. So I kind of leave that one to the side, even though it is some good marbling in there on that meat. Basically, just like a regular uh, meat, we want to get to about an 80-20 blend. I definitely know I left a lot of that good Wagyu fat in there, but uh, this is looking pretty decent. Plus, I got a secret weapon as you saw with the uh, initial ingredients, which is we're going to be throwing a little bit of bacon in here. So basically, I'm going to get a little bit of that bacon flavor jumping off in here as well. I think it's going to come together for a mean burger. It's working out so far. No issues, like I said, man, this KitchenAid do the thing. You seeing this thing real time? It ain't fighting me, I'm not even plunging it. We just popping a little bit in, letting it work. By the time I come back, it's good. Look at that marble. Boy, that was some good meat. Let me get the rest of this in. Man, this is working out great. And I decided to go with everything. Worst come to worst, I get it a little more fattier. 
than the 8020, but I'm not too worried with that beautiful Wagyu tallow in there. That ain't going to do nothing to give me some good flavor. It eventually all cook out. Next, I'm about to hit with about four pieces of this bacon right here to also go in. Now we're going to double grind this, so this is going to mix up good, but this is going to give me a whole lot of extra flavor in this thing. The last thing I'm going to do, a little tip that I learned, forgot exactly who uh, put me on to it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just throw an ice cube in there, and that'll help flush it out. I'm going to mix this up good, and then I'll let you see it before we go ahead and get that last grind. All right, so what that ice does, one, it ain't gonna hurt you, ain't nothing but a little bit of moisture. It'll help keep all of this meat cold, but it also helps flush out that last little bit of uh, meat and everything that kind of gets stuck in your grinder. So it's a nice little tip I enjoy. So I'm about to mix this up. You can see what we're looking at. If we did the single grind on this, this would be pretty broken up. This would be cool if we were doing chili or something like that. But uh, we're gonna grind this through one more time. Get us a good mix in all together so that bacon gets mixed all throughout this meat. And then uh, we should be about ready to go. Alright, so that's all put to the side. I'd say I'm probably closer to about a 75, 25, something like that versus the 80, 20. I'm not too mad at it. Like I said, this is going to cook down. I'll make sure we make some nice big patties. Let's get in here for the second go round. This should go a lot faster this time too, even though it was pretty quick on the first one. Now while that's all hanging out, I had thought about this earlier, but you know, it looked pretty white. We trying to make the ultimate brisket burger here. So uh, as you can see here, what I got is, and this is why you always save your small pieces, your trimmings and everything, and it's nice to be able to do stuff like this. This right here is from when we actually, this is some filet mignon. I want to add a little bit of meat to it, pretty much strictly good meat, and then obviously high quality. Um, we did this before I was doing a beef tenderloin. This was kind of like the tail that was a different size than the rest I'm gonna grind this up too. This was frozen. I let it get pretty much unthawed But then there's also some pretty still frozen a little bit in the center, which is cool So it'll actually stay down. I mix that all into the rest of that mixture and this is gonna be our ultimate burger Count it. Chased it with an ice cube just like we did the other. Now look at that good red quality meat right here I'm gonna go ahead and double grind this just like so that way I can get a solid consistency both ways. But this is what we mix it right back into the other one. And when I bring you back, we're gonna be doing patties. Time to get to work. We got that uh, filet mignon incorporated in here. I feel much better about this. And as far as knowing that it's gonna have a nice thickness, a good base, this is gonna be a good burger. We got brisket in there, excuse me. We got Wagyu brisket in there, Snake River Farms to be exact. We got some of that good tallow, that good fat from that brisket that's in there. We got about four pieces of some good solid bacon in there, as well as we also just went ahead and added in some prime filet mignon. These are gonna be some good burgers. I'm still anticipating that we got plenty of fat that's gonna render out of there. So what I'm thinking is, we're gonna make us a half pound burger. Uh, stay right there. So we got us some wax paper, as you can see, if it wants to cooperate. I got my handy dandy uh, wear. Wax paper weighs absolutely nothing. All right, cool. And we're gonna go for a half a pound. So we need about eight ounces for those that don't know. All right. Oh, this is gonna be a lot. That's way too much. Get this down to about eight, even. We know we'll lose some in the shrinkage. That's close. But I said a half a pound, so let's do a, a half a pound. About as close as I'm gonna get. And then we're gonna be going right over here into my uh, burger stuffers. I already done sprayed this with some Pam. Use my somewhat clean hand. Let's see if I can get this open. There we go. Drop that in there. I might not even need to do the Pam. I thought about going ahead and putting like some wax paper in the bottom, but these got these nice pretty trays where you grab this side and that pretty much brings out the whole bottom. I think it'll be cool doing it that way. Let's go ahead and get the second one together and then we'll smash us a patty. Ooh, that's close. I got the feel now. Quick little eight ounces. Wow. Ooh. How perfect we want it to be. You know I want to make it right, right? If I said eight ounces, let's go for eight ounces. Do I even need that? I do need some of that though. All right, that's close enough. Okay, so we got both of those eight ounce little burger patties in here. 
So we'll see if we can get this thing off. I kind of somewhat formed it, but pretty much I should be able to put these on and squish them a little bit. I like the way these little half cups come out. This is gonna work out well. Ah. And then I should just be able to slide this right off the top. There we go. And I put it down on some wax paper. These are gonna be some beautiful fat burgers. I like that. Almost like my boy T over there with that smokehouse burger. We're gonna see if we can't get something together. Let me get this one out and then uh, we'll keep the rest going. Ah all the way down to the last one i think this one that came out to be about seven and a half pounds hold on let me yep 7.51 what that's looking like bing and other than that here go my babies they are warm so the first thing we need to do you can stick this in the freezer or you can stick this in the fridge but it's going to take obviously longer in the fridge, but we need these to solidify and get nice and stiff. Mine are going in the freezer. Check out that old patty daddy. All right. Fresh out the freezer. These babies been set up and it has been a minute. I don't know how long it's been. We've been in the pool. We've been doing our thing, man. But these patties had plenty of time to kind of set up bacon, brisket. Wait a minute. Wagyu Snake River Falls brisket. And then we added in some of that uh, prime filet mignon. This is uh, this is gonna be a treat right here. I'm looking forward to these half pound patties. They gonna shrink up, but let's get out here and get this uh, grill fired up or this griddle fired up. Hey team, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know. Thanks for following along on today's cook. And if you are new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, subscribe, check out some of the other videos you've missed. And for everybody else that's been following along, been catching me at. Facebook and Instagram and everything. I appreciate y'all. Share it with somebody else. Let's keep growing this channel and we're going to keep this thing going. Okay. Now we get in here to the other star of the show, man. Big shout out to my guy Bobby, man, for dropping me off this boar's head beef bacon. You know, I got some die hard barbecuers out there. Y'all let me know if you've ever seen this before, if you've ever tasted some beef bacon, but uh, we're going to find out this weekend what this talking about. I mean, that looked beautiful. How bad could it be, right? We love us some bacon around here. And anything boar's head get behind, I can get behind too. So let me get this out the package. We're going to slice this up. While this uh, griddle is coming up to temp, I need to get together everything else because this is going to be a quick uh, uh, overall cook. Uh, grab me just some basic jumbo hamburgers, man. These look good, nice and soft. Uh, normally I would go with the brioche buns, but they were a little smaller and I wanted a big burger. You see them big old patties sitting over there, so I think these jungle burgers going to work a little bit better. I got me a little bit of tomato and uh, we're going to get us some lettuce out. Let me get this together and get this sliced up. I got the package, man. This thing smells amazing. Before I get into it, a cut and I had to let you check it out. Beautiful striations all through it. Great looking meat. This is going to be a nice addition onto these uh, Monster Ultimate uh brisket burgers here let's get this thing sliced up i'm gonna try to go as thin as possible that sliced up a lot easier than i thought it might um i got it down pretty thin outside this last slice but i don't mind a nice thick slice of bacon bacon but uh check this out man that is some beautiful marbling all through there flavor for days i think that's gonna be beautiful on that grill okay we got that cut up get the rest real done and uh we out on the pit and we at the griddle. We got this thing fired up. Pretty much I got it nice and hot. Got it cleaned off. Turned off my outside two burners and left my two burners in the middle here on low. I got me a little bit of this liquid gold we're going to throw down real quick. This is some of that beef tallow. This is actually uh, beef tallow from that Snake River Farms uh, Wagyu brisket. So we're going to kind of, how much better can we do? Then we'll start it off with a little bit of this brisket oil. Mix this all around. And then we're going to get over here. We got that sliced beef bacon from uh, Boar's Head looking beautiful and ready. And then these patties with the bacon in it. With the, with the Wagyu beef brisket in there. And then you also got that prime filet mignon. Hey man, this thing ready to go. And then all I'm going to do is I'm keeping it real respectful. Another one that I love, this Bearded Butcher's Cajun season. It's actually getting light. Uh, we're going to hit them on there, little top and bottom. Hit them with a little cheese. These babies is going to be prime and on time. Let me mix this uh, oil around. And we on. I put the bacon on the outside. It shouldn't take too long for that to get done. But I mean, this baby nice and hot. As you can see, everybody's 
sizzling up nice and quick, got it nice and oiled up. You know, something about that uh, prime Wagyu uh, tallow. I swear, this one always looked golder, or more golder, or shall we say. Then the uh, regular tallow that I got tallow that I got in there are just some regular prime briskets. That Wagyu looks a little bit better, and I feel like it stays more liquid temperature longer. And uh, the other one is usually more solidified. So we're going to let these go. You know, I'm going for the one flip method. I'm about to quickly get some seasoning on top of these burgers. And I'm going to let them hang out until I can start seeing some blood pooling on top. Until I can see that they look like they're about halfway done. And then we'll flip them over. Uh, these right here, I'll probably check them out here in the next minute or so. I'll bring you back. Instantly everything smells better. I hit it with a nice layer of that uh, bearded butchers on top. I mean, keep in mind, we got no seasoning in here other than I expect that bacon and that bacon fat and the brisket fat to give us some love. But a uh, nice strong layer on one side and then uh, be a little bit lighter on the other as we'll uh, get a little bit of more salt from this bacon that's going to be on top. So far, so good. Like I said, this is going to go fast. Since I came back over here, I checked on my bacon. Looked like this side going a little bit uh, hotter. So I slid most of them over here. Flipped a couple of them. Starting to get some nice color over here. I'm going to let that render out a little bit more, but I ain't want to get overdone. Now these burgers, as I'm looking at them, I want them to get a nice crust over. They ain't quite ready yet. I'm starting to see them get halfway, close to halfway. I don't quite see so much of the uh, bleeding through. I feel like it must be hot up there because he started early. So I'll check him first. Perfect flip, beautiful crust. These babies looking soft as you can see that baby can break up on you. So I ain't mad at that. That's going to be a beautiful crumbly burger. That's going to be nice and moist as you see it coming up off of there. Just a little bit of bearded butchers on this side. And then uh, let me hurry up and then I'll cover them up with that cheese. Once I get them to about my doneness level. Hmm. Man, if you could smell the smells, as my man say. I smell smells around here. I'm telling you what, smelling all right up in here. I just temp some of these burgers. I'm somewhere between this one down here was only at about 137 ish. Uh, the rest of them was around 145 ish, and then up here at the top, more closer to 150 something. Uh, as far as the regulated temperatures, you usually want to take a burger up to about 165. Make sure everything is done, especially when you're talking about ground beef. You never know how much meat is uh, mixed in together. Uh, being that you're talking about it, I put steak in here. We got brisket in here. Technically, it comes down to your own personal preference and uh, how you like your meat done. Some people like more of a medium burger. I'm necessarily not that guy, but you do what you do right here. You make sure that you like it and do it the way you want it to be. For me, I'm about to let these babies go a little bit longer. And then we're going to throw some of this cheese on here. I got me some uh, sliced Monterey Jack cheese, just some general stuff from the uh, local grocery store. That's going right on top as they finish off these last mm, 10 degrees or so. And we'll let that melt. And then I'm going to get them off of here, toast my buns. And this bacon is just rendering out a little bit because there is some nice thick fat on there. But man, this looks so juicy and tasty. I can't wait to get a hold of some of this beef bacon. So I kind of rearrange these and let them uh, get some different love in some different spots. Everybody's getting close to temp. There go that Monterey Jack cheese going on there. Let me uh, get rid of some of the wax paper. Bing, give me that. Ah. Cheese stay, wax paper come with me. Bam, bam. Now I could have been gluttonous. I thought about going with two different cheeses on here. Give me a couple of different colors. But, uh, and I'm not going to kill myself today. I'm just going to keep it nice and pretty. And then uh, I got me a nice cleaned off spot. We're going to start getting these buns going. And I'm not going to give these too much of a toast, just a little something. I don't want them necessarily crunchy, you know. But I just want them to get a nice little toast. I added a little bit of that Duke's mayo on there. You can use butter or whatever you want. But these won't take nothing but a second to get a little bit of color. And then uh, we're going to assemble these. Bacon is well rendered. Just been flipping that back and forth. You see that looking great over there. And that's going right on top. Oops, messed it up on the last one. So like I told you, this wouldn't take too long. Let me show you something I like doing. So these buns got just a little bit of firmness now on the outside. Just a tad bit of brownness. You still see that Duke's Mayo on there? That's done enough. I don't want to get them too crispy. And I don't got to add no more mayo. It's going to stay just like you see it. Eh, I got my condiments over there. We about to start assembling some of these babies. There we go. This is exactly like I like it. So they still got a nice little tinge to it. 
nice little bit of a crunch still nice and soft in the middle let me get the rest of these off you see that cheese is pretty much there bacon been ready we waiting okay now to assemble now obviously you add whatever condiments you like i got me some nice green leaf lettuce that i already cleaned off make sure you always clean your lettuce i did find me a bug but hey that's natural right this came out the garden somewhere the garden of eden right get us some nice pretty lettuce it's gonna be kind of my bed i like having that duke's mayo on the bottom just for that taste first off but also that mayo becomes like that first line of defense against all that grease sometimes i like to try to pour through we're gonna take care of all that nice big piece of lettuce then i'm gonna throw me a nice couple tomatoes on here if you don't like tomatoes don't use tomatoes you know what i mean I like me some tomatoes, and I'll leave one of them without for my little, little thing. And now, let's get these patties over here. I think you're going to be the first victim. Come on up off of there. Uh, drip, drip, drip. And we're going to slide you right here. Like that there. And then uh, I just dabbed off a little bit of that extra uh, oil on there. Look at that beef bacon, man. It's got a lot of meat on it. But I got it nice and crispy. Got that fat up out of there. Let's get some of that on top. Woohoo! Bacon is on. Man, these pieces are so thick. I mean, that's one piece of bacon I just cut in half. And that's going to do it for these burgers. And I tasted some of that burger juice coming up off that spatula. That uh, bearded butcher's Cajun is 100. Now, last step for me, optional. Man, it's going to be a traditional burger today. So uh, I could have added pickles. I don't think I'm going to do pickles, but I am going to add just a little bit of uh, ketchup and mustard. Uh, I ran into this old mustard. It said it's thicker and richer. We'll try it out, huh? We'll try it out. I like that. No high fructose corn syrup. And we 100. I mean, I just do the old school, man. A little dibble of the ketchup, a little dibble of the mustard. Swirl it up. And uh, there we go. Maybe spin it around once I get this baby on top. Oh, yeah. Can you check that out? Look at that one time. That might be your thumbnail right there. Mm, mm, mm. Let me assemble these. I left one with no tomato for the little one. Let's see if she eat a whole burger. Let's see if I can get her. Man, come on now. Fully assembled. These things ready to rock. I had to grab me a couple of uh, the kosher uh, dill pickle spears. Uh, you know, again, do it the way you like it. This is going to be a little something, something. I'm excited to get a piece of this in my mouth. I did not taste anything, which is good for me. Not even a little bit of that beef bacon. So uh, I'm about to get me a knife. We'll cut into this. And then uh, give me one second. Got that baby cut in half. Peekaboo. Oh, that's so perfect for me. That's how I want it to be, baby. All right. I guess I'm going to do the honors with my wrong hand. You know, I'm, I'm a righty. So I'm going to try this with the left hand. Let's squish it down and see what we got. Mmm, good, good. Hold on, man. I took a bite of that, and juices went everywhere. Man, that burger is so juicy, so flavorful. Definitely had glad that I put that additional um, fillet in there. Mmm, and that beef bacon, that stuff got some flavor on it. I can taste that smoke. This burger is banging right here. I kind of feel like I wish I'd have put one with barbecue sauce on it. Let me get in here again. Mmm. I'm talking about so tender. That double grind just fall apart. Woo! All right, team. It's 118, but we got that thing done. Luckily, on the Blackstone, they make quick work of those cooks. Don't really take too long on there at the end of the day. Once we got everything fired up, we talking about maybe a five minute cook, something like that. So that's why you gotta have all those ingredients uh, all ready together up front. Let's break it down. First off, the KitchenAid did its thing. Especially on something like that, that wasn't a whole lot of meat. It tore that right down. I think I ended up with five patties. They was all pretty much at about a half a pound. So basically about two and a half pounds of meat. I'm glad that I put that um, additional uh, filet mignon in there. Not only was it good, but I think I was a little light on hard meat. I had a lot of fat in there. I like the way overall flavor-wise how it came out though. Uh, it had a lot of rich flavor to it. It was nice and juicy. 
But with that said, that Beauty Butchers came in there with that Cajun and put a nice little bit of umph on there. You know what I mean? Um, as far as that bacon that I added in there, I really didn't taste it too much. Uh, maybe you tasted a lot more being that it would have been cooked already uh, versus I think it just added a little bit more fat to the burger. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll play with that, omit that, uh, or try something different with that uh, a, a different way next time. But overall, the burger was slamming. That beef bacon, big shout out to my guy Bobby to put me on with that, man. I appreciate that. That boar's head beef bacon, that was pretty much, that was fire. I think that I might have overcooked it a little bit as I like crispier bacon and I wanted a crispy bacon for this sandwich. I felt like it was a little bit more chewy compared to the rest of that sandwich, which was super just tender and bite through. Um, but with that said, it tasted great. It kind of tasted exactly like I expected. It tasted like bacon, but with way more of a beefier flavor. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying that in breakfast. Overall, I like the burger a little bit more on the end. Once I took one bite, first thing I had to go do was grab me some barbecue sauce. Once I put barbecue sauce on there, that thing was all the way live. I ate that burger and instantly got the meat sweats. And that was when I was inside the house. So let me tell you, that thing was pure, delectable, fantasticness if that's a word but uh one way or another i enjoyed myself i enjoyed this cook it's fun pulling out the blackstone didn't make a fire today but i never used that enough we'll see some more of that beef bacon here soon enough i'll see y'all soon enough shout out to the family my boys at black smoke barbecue you and tv land anybody else i'm gonna holler at y'all in about a week peace